Hey everyone, God bless you. Um, the Lord put something on my heart and you know, I thought it was going to be an easy message and, you know, uh, uh, only an only comforting message. Um, but that's not the case. Uh, I was going to start it and I was only going to put the second half of this video that you're about to watch. I was only going to do the second half, uh, which I thought was the whole video, but the Lord led me to more and he wants me to include it. So I'm just going to say off the, like, just right at the beginning right now, if you're watching this video, if you recently got my channel fr from me or from somebody else, or somehow you came here and you're not sure if you're saved or you're not sure 100% uh, sure if you know the Lord Jesus Christ I highly suggest I'm not just I highly suggest it is crucial that you call out to him immediately because what he showed me to show in this video he is um he is coming very soon. And if you're not right with him and you haven't accepted him as your Lord and you haven't given your life fully to Jesus, he's not mad at you right now. He loves you. He wants, he wants you to come back to him and he wants you to turn to him and repent. It says that he doesn't want anybody to perish, but all to come to repentance Repentance isn't just saying sorry for your sins. It's turning from them and not doing them anymore. Trying your best to make a, a conscious effort to turn the other way, to go the opposite way. So like I was saying, he's not mad at you. But when he returns, those that have been warned and have heard the message and didn't heed the warnings. And even those that, that didn't hear a message, they're going to be responsible for what they did in this body and to be saved from that responsibility of what you did. You have to accept him because when he comes back, he has to judge righteously. Yes, he loves you. But when he comes back, nobody's going to have an excuse for the things that they've been doing wrong because the warnings have been out through, through the sickness that came onto this earth of COVID and the lies that are clearly lies to everybody and the crazy weather that has been happening and um, all of the, the volcanoes that have been going off and all of the earthquakes that have been happening and all of these things, the earth is screaming that Jesus is coming back for his bride to take his spirit off of this earth, to take the, the Holy Spirit, the restrainer off of this earth. Because what's coming on this earth is terrifying. It's actually like taking my breath away, what he's going to have me share in this video. And, and if you stay to the end, you're going to see that it's a beautiful, supernatural ending, a uh, you know, supernatural thing that he showed. But it's a, it's a good ending for those who are in him. But it's a terrifying ending for those who chose the world and the pleasures of this world instead of Jesus and living for him. How to be saved from what's coming upon this earth. War is coming to this country, America, and the world. War is coming, but specifically America. And soon after 
war starts here in America and, and New York gets nuked and foreign troops on U.S. soil. Soon after, sometime, sometime after, Jesus Christ is coming back to get his true believers, those who truly love him and have, have lived for him and given their lives to him. You have to admit your guilt before God, that you're guilty of things that you've done that you can't change, things that you've done in this past, in, in the past, in this body, that you can't change. There's things we all have done. It says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So we've all done bad, and I'm, I'm not above anybody, and I'm no better than anybody. But I've admitted that I'm not good, and, and I've, I've received his gift. What is his gift? It's a gift of eternal life. This is eternity in paradise. This is e your eternal life, or it's eternal death. So you admit your guilt, that you're guilty in front of him because he's already seen everything you've done in your body. So just admit it to him, call out to him. It says that, that those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Those who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved. Call on his name, call out to him, talk to him and believe in your heart fully that he died for your sins and God rose him from the dead the third day. Even secular people and scientists, they know and, and admit that Jesus lived. Believe he died for your sins. Confess your sins to him so that you can be cleansed. Put your faith in his blood and what he did on the cross for you and confess him as your Lord with your mouth. It says with your heart, that's what you believe with. And that's what makes you right with God is believing what his son did on the cross. And it says with your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. That's what saves you is confess him as your Lord. And then be willing to turn from your sins and let go of your life. Because this, what you're seeing right now, the world, all of this is about to stop. It's not going to be this beautiful place like you see anymore. It's going to be desolation and the wrath of God is about to be poured upon this earth. So call out to him before it's too late. It says in Isaiah 55, call upon him while he's near. Because there's going to be a time when he's not going to be able to be found. Call upon him when he may be found. says those who try to save their lives will lose it but those who lose their lives for my sake will find it and will keep it until life eternal if you hold on to your life this this life of money and and cars and and women and and uh you know money as your as your uh as your god and, and all of these things that the world offers you, if that's what you want, he'll let you have it. But if you want true peace, it says when, when you give your life to him, he'll give you peace that passes all understanding, not as the world gives peace, not beaches. And, and you know, that's this is a false peace. All of these beautiful things are going to pass away. That, that look beautiful. It's really an illusion. It looks really good, but it's destined for, for failure. It's destined for fire. It says the first time he, he destroyed the earth, he destroyed it by water. And he promised he'll never do it by water again. This next time it's going to be by fire. And it says, and we all will receive the things that we've done in this body that which you reap that's that which you sow that's what you will reap you reap what you sow so if you've sowed to the flesh and that's all you've sowed is is flesh 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 
then you're going to reap flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you're going to get life eternal. Make the right choice today. It says, now is the day of salvation. Call out to him right when you see this. Pause this if you have to and call out to him. Or at least watch this video through and don't stop the video if, you, if, you, if you're not sure if you know Jesus or not. Please, I am begging you to give your life to Jesus. Okay. So I talked for 10 minutes about that. Over 10 minutes. Um, stick all the way through the video. Um, my back has been hurting recently, and it's been healed now. I've been healed of the... Um, of the torment that was that was happening. I still feel it a little bit, but it's basically gone. Thank you, Jesus. Um, so I walked. Um, I walked to get something to eat. And on my way there, um, well, I talked to two, two different people about the Lord. But on my way back, I saw this van pull in front of me and it had a number on it and uh, it was it was called the Hope House Hope because he's our hope and so I'm going to show you that but what happened before that is there was a train going by and uh, the Lord said clearly he said, go get the number on the very last car. And so I walked over to the car um, to get the number. And so I filmed the, uh, the train. So that's what you're about to see right now. And so all glory to God. I give all the glory, honor, power, and praise to the Most High God. I don't think of myself as anything. And I give him all the glory. Amen. Okay. I was told to get the last number on this card. On this car. The last car. The, the number on this last car. I was told to get the number on this last car. Come on. Okay, here's the last car. What is it? What's the number? What's the message, Lord? Six, eight. Six, eight, two, uh... Okay. Message received, Lord. Okay, so you saw 6821 on the train, and it just so happens that, uh, you know, I'm saying that he's saying the last car. I got to look at the last car, the number on the last car. And it just so happens that it says in graffiti on one of the cars, last, which is kind of crazy because where it has my mind go is like, this is the last warnings that are going out that are going out as well. And so um, this is how God has shown me to uh, get confirmations from him. And, and this is how he speaks to me as, as well as hearing his voice. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. Um, every, every word in the Bible is attached to a number. 
It's called the Strong's Concordance. And when they originally translated um, the Bible from Hebrew to uh, English is the Old Testament. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew originally, and and some parts were written, or you know, some words were Aramaic, but then the New Testament was written in Greek originally, and they had to translate that to English. And when they did, they attached a number to each word in the Bible. And this is what um, I found out after I was already looking up numbers, and the Lord led me to do this. Um, that it's it's what they they teach you in in Bible school, um, you know, with the Strong's Concordance and and the the etymology of the words. So that's why I look it up like this. So um, I know some people may not have heard that before on this channel. If you're new here, it says uh, six eight two one uh, is a Hebrew word, safad. I guess is what it is, and. It's to, I don't know if I said that right, to draw together and to contract and see it's used in, it's used in a couple places, in two places, but in the one that it gives is it says in Lamentations 4, 8, that their skin cleaves to their bones. So the word is cleave, or uh, these are all the definitions, shriveled. Um, you know, to contract means like, you know, like when your muscles contract, they shorten, right? It says to bind fast, to shackle, um, but then it, it gives the, the definition of the word right here. Their skin contracteth and shriveleth upon their bones. So it's talking about skin that is is sticking to your bones that like like that, you know, skinny people, right? But what, what makes you... Um, what makes your skin cleave to your bones? Well, this is where the Lord led me is Lamentations 4. And we won't read the whole thing. Um, but this is what troubled me so greatly before doing this video is that the Lord is, is pointing out that this is that this is coming, and I'll talk. I, I wrote down what he said, because um, he said something as I was reading this, and so let's just read a couple verses here. It says, "The tongue of the suckling child, so a little child, right, cleaves to the roof of his mouth for thirst." You know, the it, talking about how how these young children, these these you know, toddlers are, are thirsty. It says the young children ask for bread and no man breaks it unto them. So they're wanting bread, they're wanting food, but the, the parents aren't giving it to them. They're eating, but they're not giving it to their children. It says they that feed, uh, they that did feed delicately are, are desolate in the streets. So the, the people that are, are elite, you know the the rich people, the high people, that that fed well, are now desolate in the streets. They that were brought up in scarlet, so in nice clothing, now embrace dung hills, for the punishment of the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the punishment of of the sin of Sodom, that was overthrown as in a moment. And no hand stayed on her because Sodom and Gomorrah, they were, uh, it rained down fire and brimstone. And in the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot, there was only one guy in the whole town. And it was Lot and his family were taken out of the town. And then God rained fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah. And they were immediately incinerated, all the people of that town. And if you type in, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, like in in Google or, or YouTube, Sodom and Gomorrah today, it'll bring you to a place near the Dead Sea, and it's the only place that has the uh, the most pure sulfur balls, uh, balls of sulfur, in the whole world, um, and it's like they can't find it anywhere else as pure as the sulfur there because it, it rained down fire and brimstone sulfur. So I just went and found this video real quick. It was done on June 3rd 
Um, and it talks about the Bible describing burning sulfur and fire raining down from the sky, which permanently destroyed the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. So you can go find that video. I haven't watched the whole thing, and I don't know this guy, but um, there's that. So I'm up here on the site uh, called locally Numera, and this is the site that the archaeologists associated with Gomorrah. So here you can see that ashy layer that's just underneath the surface. Uh, this is full of burned pottery. It's full of the fragments of human bones. The question is, is what evidence is there of this burning sulfur that rained down? Well, it seems that the culprit are these sulfur balls that are also found in this area. So it says, um, this is where it is used in verse eight. It says their visage, their, their image, their faces are blacker than coal. They are not known in the streets, their skin. And then this is where the, the word is cleaveth to their bones. See, six, eight, two, one. And so it says your, their skin from not eating is sticking to their bones. It is withered. It's, they, they've become like a stick. They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. So those that are killed with like weapons of war, whether, you know, in our times it's a gun or, or bombs or, or, you know, um, whatever it is, it says that, that it's better to be killed that way than with hunger. And then it says, why? Because these pine away, they waste away slowly um i see it says they pine away it says what does pine away mean to become thin and weak because of sadness or or of loss um in the bible it says what does it mean in the bible it says to lose vigor and health or flesh uh as through grief so it says um See, to, to pine away from hunger is what it says in, in number three. It says, those that be, be killed, be slain with hunger, these pine away, they waste away and wither, stricken through for want of the fruits of the field, of, of you know, uh, fruit and vegetables and all the good things that they had before. It says the hands of the pitiful women have sodden their own children. Sodden their children? That means that they've boiled and eaten their children to boil, to seethe. It says uh, roasted and cooked. So they've cooked their children because they're hungry. And it says they were their meat. So their children were their meat in the destruction of the daughter of my people. The Lord said, when I read this, let me, let me look up exactly how he said it. And this, this is why, this is why I was so um, disturbed when in the beginning of this video is it says, <sighs> As I was reading Lamentations 4, I heard the Lord say, put it in the video, talking about Lamentations 4. He said, it will be worse than what we just read. He said, it will be worse for America than this chapter. And he said, and read both. He's talking about Ezekiel 32 as well, because it says... Um, so let me just read a couple more verses. It says, uh, we just read verse 10, that they've they've baked and, and boiled their own children to eat their children. And then it says in verse 11 that the Lord has accomplished his fury. He has poured out his fierce anger and has kindled in a fire in Zion, and it hath devoured the foundations thereof. So he said it's going to be worse than this chapter. It says... They hunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets. Our end is near, our days are fulfilled, 
our end has come. Our persecutors are swifter than the eagles of heaven. They pursued us upon the mountains. They laid wait for us in the wilderness. And I've been telling people for a long time that, that Russia is coming and China is coming. China's, I was shown China's coming from the north. Russia's coming from the south. If you Google uh, uh, Canada working with China, they have in the most recent years, the most recent past, they've trained with the Chinese military up there and done drills. And so, and so in that video of the, of the train, I said, Lord message received because I knew he was giving me a message, but I didn't know that that, that um, graffiti said last until I rewatched the video. I didn't know that it said that when I filmed it as it went by. Um, so it says to draw together and contract, and it's it's talking about um, you know hunger. See, it says Ezekiel 32, 6, and we're going to read this here in a second, but you guys understand that they're creating a food shortage and a food crisis in this country. Um, I don't know if you've seen the Elite magazine cover. I know a lot of you probably have because this is kind of a couple months old news. But the Elite read this magazine called The Economist Magazine. Let me show you. So this is The Economist Magazine and all the Elite of the world read this magazine, apparently. And this was what they had recently is, you know, uh, they have a bunch of controversial uh, uh, covers, but this was the, the one that I was saying is they're, they're warning of a coming food catastrophe. But when you zoom in on these, uh, what they said is that there's only a couple months of wheat uh, storage left for the, for the world, basically. Um, but there's different countries that are hoarding, you know, different grains in, in silos and, and holding grains. You know, of course, there's there's a reserve for, for the rich people. But if you zoom in on it, it's not wheat. It's a bunch of skulls. Because it says in the Bible, because they, they, they follow the Bible as their rule book, because... Jesus Christ makes all the rules. The one who, the word of God is what says what goes and what doesn't. You know, God is in control on the throne. They, they may think they're in control, but they're not. They're just being used by God to accomplish the prophecies in the Bible. And it goes, <laughs> what's going on in the world is matching up, like always, right with the book of Revelation. And it's Revelation 6. So this is talking about the, the seals that get opened by um, the Lord Jesus Christ is the only one that can open these seals. And a lot of people have said on their, on their channels that the seal, you know, we're on a certain seal right now. And it's like, no, no seals have been opened. And when seals start opening, everybody's going to know that, uh, you know, it's, it's not going to be this, it's not even going to be a false piece. It's going to be a nightmare for everybody. But I'm talking about the third seal is famine. And you guys can go read this, but it, it talks about a famine that's coming on this earth, that it's going to kill so many people with this famine. And it's going to be, it's, it's the black horse that comes with a pair of balances in his hand. And so... Okay, so I haven't read this article, but all you have to do is type in, um, all you have to do is type in, oh my goodness, with these ads. All of these food processing plants are being lit on fire in so many different ways. And of course, you know, you go check the fact checkers and they say, oh, there's nothing going on, nothing to see here. But all of these uh, factories are getting set on fire 
And if you just go through all the different things, a plane crashed in an Idaho potato food processing plant, uh, uh, Covington, Georgia, firefighters respond to, a, respond to a plane crash that killed two people at a General Mills food processing plant. A uh, massive fire swept through Wisconsin River Meats and, uh, you know, destroying part of the facility. The Shearer's Foods Plant in Hermiston, Oregon caught fire. A uh, structure fire in a Walmart distribution center. A fire that broke out in Nestle Hot, Hot Pockets. They're, they're going after our Hot Pockets? I mean, it's... <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not a laughing matter. This is, this is seriously uh, uh, them totally sabotaging the food industry and it's not I'm only just gonna that. show you guys this is tiktok as i'm telling you guys that about uh uh places getting burnt down i just so happened to get a notification apparently from tiktok i'm never on there that not very often at all it says arson uh, the a person arson, I guess, are suggested friends by me, and so that's not an accident. That was totally the Lord showing me that yes, it's arson that's happening at these places, and um, yeah, if you go look at my TikTok, help me help you seven two six. It's just videos from my YouTube channel um, to try to get people over to YouTube is what it is. And so this is a channel Ice Age Farmer. I've shown him on my channel before. And uh, he has a lot of really good information. And, you know, he's heavily censored. So that's always a, a good sign that somebody's over the target as well. And um, you could go check out his channel. He, I don't think he's a, um, a believer. I mean, he might be, but I'm not really sure. It's uh, mostly secular, though. Anyways. My friends, welcome. There's so much going on with respect to the controlled demolition of our food supply that I scarcely know where to begin this report. In fact, I just realized that it's that itself which is the most important thing to share. That when we step back from these individual things that I'll talk about, that, it, that if we pretend we were some alien species in a faraway space watching humanity, we would be scratching our heads and asking ourselves right now, and rightly so, understandably so, what the hell is going on down there right now? It seems like they've completely given up all hope of, of continuing as a species. They're just stopping their food production. They're not planting their crops in many cases, or they're changing to different things at the last second. They're not fertilizing the crops they do have. The greenhouses that they spent tons of money and years building are empty now because of some economics reason they give for it. You can, I mean, we can give reasons for these things, but they give reasons for killing off their pigs because of Japanese encephalitis, killing off their fish because of bacterial outbreaks at the fisheries. California is not even bothering to stock the lakes and rivers this year. They're just giving up. Texas is killing off their deer. Other places too, killing off their deer because of chronic wasting disease. Uh, Northern Ireland, killing off their sheep because of cow farts, basically, because of CO2. What is wrong with humanity? They're killing off hundreds of millions of chickens, as we've talked about, as lots of people are now talking about, because of bird flu. But not only that, they're immediately firing all of the workers, hundreds of workers at these factories. This is an example I'll look at today, where a single PCR test, one PCR test, immediately they turned around management killed off millions of birds and then fired hundreds of workers that have been there. There's no plan to restart that capacity, obviously. That's just gone now. And they've been investing money in AI to weigh the eggs and all this stuff, but they got the memo. It's time to turn off animal agriculture at this point. Animals are dirty and dangerous. We're figuring out they have antibiotic-resistant superbugs and it's just too dangerous to continue keeping animals now. In fact, the mainstream media is even running cover stories now, saying it is true that there have been hundreds of fires at these food processing plants, but it's a conspiracy theory. It did happen, but it's a conspiracy theory. It's literally what they're saying. In fact, this article has the Ice Age Farmer uh, food supply 
spontaneous combustion map on it. It's all it's it's conspiracy theories. Uh, the fires did happen though, and they another article. In fact, if you look, this is another key. I've mentioned this before. When you see hundreds of articles coming out within the span of a couple hours that all have basically the same boilerplate text straight from Operation Mockingbird headquarters, you can tell the talking points went out, and this went out today. Uh, a new brand of conspiracy theories around kamikaze planes and food fires. The food processing plants are all are all conspiracy theories. Tons of different headlines running from different outlets about this food fires conspiracy theory and Tucker is to blame for it. And in fact, even this channel specifically is now branded Russian disinformation. I'm told that if you try and post my videos to Facebook now, you get this warning that uh, Ice Age Farmer is potentially under the control of the Russian government, which is fascinating, and I'm waiting for my check. Now, this should just be funny to me, except it also is still relevant given that the US government just created their board of disinformation. What that means is that anyone who's deviating from the establishment narrative in any way, even if you're just telling people to grow food, like I am, can now expect to be labeled Russian disinformation and summarily censored from the internet. But that's to be expected. You can't talk about becoming self-sufficient. In times of engineered food shortages, gardening itself becomes an act of rebellion. And that's where we are now. And that's the bottom line, really, is that when you're looking, when we're the aliens looking at Earth, asking, why are they giving up? What, what is, what's happened down there? When you look at the ending stocks, according to the USDA's latest numbers for the US, across nine different staple commodities and oil seeds, uh, corn, soybeans, wheat, oats, cotton, canola, sorghum, and barley, all at relatively low levels and needing, as Naomi points out here, we need a bumper crop. And yet, where are we now? We have supply chain ch challenges, fertilizer shortages, uh, other inputs shortages, like glyphosate having a force majeure declared on it, tractor parts shortages, cold and a rainy spring, meaning we still haven't been in the fields planting in many cases. That's what these 0% progress means. And so as always understated Arlen Suderman says, this means we're planting in less than ideal conditions and that's going to impact yield potential. In other words, we're not going to get that bumper crop. And that is really the bottom line here is that uh, all the run up in food prices and problems that we're having already we're experiencing is just the, the bare bones warm up to the real food crisis ahead. And that's why they have uh, all this stuff in the media about using food as a weapon of war from Russia. That's why Chancellor Schultz in Germany just got up and said, we're gonna have a global hunger crisis, saying the same thing that Trudeau and Biden have also said now. This is them fulfilling that karmic duty, the lesser magic of telling people what's coming so that if you now fail to prepare for it, well, you are complicit in our creation of this crisis. That's why they're all telegraphing this right now. That's why CEOs of major food companies like Goya is up there saying we're on the cusp of a global food crisis. This is why John Podesta ran the food chain reaction game six years ago and told us this was going to happen. So for years, we have known that this was in the cards, that there would be an engineered food crisis and it would be used to usher in the uh, total transformation of food that the Rockefellers and the E-Lancet Commission and so on and so forth have openly called for and talked about how they're going to do this. We've known this was coming. The question that remained, or the, the bargaining process, you know, it's part of a grieving process, when you, maybe it's not as bad as, uh, that was going on for me and perhaps for others, if I'm totally candid with you guys today, is maybe it won't be that bad, right? We saw with COVID that they created this thing and they ginned up the numbers and they pushed the fear out to the media and they certainly took control. They locked everything down. But it's not like there were ever really people dying on the streets, right? There were some crazy TikToks out of China, but that we really just didn't have the reality to reinforce the, the media describing this, this total pandemic of, of craziness, right? It didn't stop them from taking control, but there was no real crisis. And I've wondered, would we have the same thing here? Would they tell us there's a food crisis and maybe there's a couple things missing from the shelves, but at the end of the day, it's not really a big deal. We all go home you know, decently fed. Uh, or would it really be the, the full-blown hollow or depopulation plan? And, the you know, 
the brutal reality and i and i'm still you can tell i'm i'm slow to want to talk about it. it is a dark future that we are walking into right now and i am still doing my own bargaining and grieving cuz i don't want to experience it any more than anybody else does but it is pretty clear by the the things that they have set into motion at this point we have past that point of no return and we're headed for a really hard landing and so that's why we need to be working as quickly as possible to stand up a decentralized food so that guy's name is christian with a um ice age farmer and you guys could go look at his channel he has a lot of good information on there unfortunately he doesn't um it doesn't seem like he knows the full truth jesus is the truth um and that it's the end um, but he has a lot of good information of what's going on. He said, we're at the point of no return. Well, I did a video and I, if that looked familiar, it's because I've had it on my channel before t talking about this, but the Lord wanted me to say it again now, um, about, you know, the, the food that's, uh, the engineered food crisis that's coming and it's actually going to be a full out famine is, is what it's going to be. And it's it's a uh, it's going to be a nightmare. Go watch this video, "The Point of No Return." Um, it was a word that was given to me by the Lord Jesus Christ. I I heard His voice, and I wrote down what I heard, and that's what um, that video is about. Was a word from the Lord, and so. Uh, so, guys, Revelation six talking about the third seal famine uh the economist the elite uh magazine for for those that basically rule this world the coming food catastrophe that they're warning about gonna kill millions all engineered by design um and this is what the Lord wanted me to show you all from a number on the side of a train, 6821, that was confirmed immediately because a car goes by saying last. Is it last, last chance, last warning, last car? I guess the last car is how I took it, but it might be these other things. Uh, last chance, last warning, because this is also what he wants me to read is, is uh, part of Ezekiel 32. Let me find it. So remember what he said when I was reading Lamentations. He said it's going to be worse than this, what you're reading. And so he's likening what's about to come to America and the world to these, these chapters we're reading, it says, Thus saith the Lord God, I will therefore spread out my net over thee with a company of many people, and they shall bring thee up in my net. Talking about bringing people into captivity, and I don't know if you guys have seen those ghost cities that they have in, uh, in China. They have whole cities that are just like ghost towns, and nobody lives in these buildings. And the Lord told me that people are going to be brought to China uh, that are captives of them and they're going to be living in these ghost cities. Just Google the ghost cities in China and you'll see all of these cities, there's hardly anybody living here. And the Lord told me that they're going to be used to house people from all over the world, uh, but from America too, uh, that are taken captive. And so go look into that. So that verse that reminded me of that, thus saith the Lord God, I will therefore spread out my net over thee with a company of many people, and they shall bring you up in my net. Then will I leave thee upon the land. I will cast thee forth upon an open field and will cause all the fowls of heaven to remain upon thee and I will fill the beasts with the whole earth uh, fill the beasts of the whole earth with thee so birds are going to be feeding on humans 
uh, is, is what this is saying. Bodies being being fed on by by the fowls of heaven, by the birds of heaven. It says, I will lay thy flesh upon the mountains and fill the valleys with thy height. I will also water with thy blood the land wherein thou swimmest, even to the mountains and the rivers shall be full of thee. Because everybody is going to do what? Flee to the mountains, go to their uh, their hideouts and their their cabins in the woods. When a lot of people aren't understanding, all of the highways are going to be shut down when things go down because they're going to be uh, taking people right out of their cars, separating families from each other. The government are going to have checks check spots, uh, uh, check stops, check points. Yeah, checkpoints. Uh, and, and not only that, if you make it to the mountains, the Antichrist, the, the Antichrist system, the beast system, they're just going to fly a drone over. They can see a mouse, the heat signature of a mouse in a forest, let alone a whole family sitting in a, in a cabin with a generator going. People think they're going to escape this. They're not going to escape at all. It says, I will also water with thy blood the land wherein thou swimmest, even in the mountains and the rivers shall be full of thee. I already read that. Um, And when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven and make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud and the moon shall not give her light. All the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over thee and set darkness upon thy land, saith the Lord God. It sounds like it's not just physical darkness, but it's also going to be spiritual darkness that you can feel. It says, I will also um, vex the hearts of many people when I shall bring thy destruction among the nations into the countries which thou hast not known, like those ghost cities, right? bring you into the countries that you have not known. Yea, I will make many people amazed at thee. They're going to be astonished at what's happening. And their kings shall be horribly afraid for thee when I shall brandish my sword before them and they shall tremble at every moment, every man for his own life in the day of thy fall. Everybody's going to be scared of their for their life to be taken from them. They're going to be scared of dying constantly, all day, every day. And that's what the Lord God is having me put this video out right now to warn anybody that is even has a fraction of doubt in their mind of if they know Jesus to call out to him and say, what do I have to do to be ready for you to come back and, and to take me off of this earth and to save me from this, Lord? Please, in Jesus' name, save those that are hearing this message, Lord, in Jesus' name.